Hello everyone, in this chapter we will learn about shadow mapping. Shadow mapping is a technique of casting or creating shadows in the scene. Shadow mapping is based on a simple concept that if light has eyes, whatever light can see will be a lit surface and whatever light cannot see will be in shadow or in dark. So suppose we have a light in the room and we place a card in front of it and if we consider that the light is an eye, whatever light can see in this room will be in the light, will be the lit surface and whatever is hidden from the eye of this light will be in the shadow or in the dark. In general, light mapping is performed in two steps. However, there are few specific steps for unity which we will also take a look at in this chapter. Step 1. The objective of this step is to make a depth map of the scene from the light's eye. So suppose we have a sphere and there is a card below it, there is a plane below it and the light is placed on the top. In order to see the scene from the light's eye, we will have to render the scene from light's point of view or light's viewpoint, just as we usually render the scene from camera's point of view. And what we want out of this render is the depth map. So in this case, light will be considered as a camera and there will be a frustrum from the camera based on which the scene will be rendered. This frustrum or this light will be orthographic when light is directional. So the frustrum will be an orthographic, it's a square or rectangular frustrum. When the light is directional or we consider it as sunlight, which is an infinitely large light. And this frustrum will be perspective, this camera will be perspective when this light is point light. So first step of step one, which is 1A, is render the scene from light. 1B, the Z depth after the Z test for every fragment is stored in depth buffer in the form of a texture, which we will call light depth map texture. We will just call it light depth map texture to differentiate the term from the depth map that is rendered by the camera. And to take an overview of how this depth map will be stored, for example, first object that is being rendered is this plane. And every fragment of this plane will go through a Z test. And based on which, the distance from the light will be stored in depth buffer. And then comes the turn of the sphere. So if this fragment of the sphere is being rendered, the Z test will be done and this fragment of the sphere is at the smaller value or at the lesser distance from the camera or the light in this case. So the Z depth of this fragment will be stored and how this fragment will be stored in the texture is first this world space position will be transformed in view space and this view space will be the view space of light and then the projection space and the projection space will be of light as well because in order to transform these spaces here we will use the view matrix of the light and here we will use the projection matrix of the light and then the projection space will be transformed into normalized device coordinate and then normalized device coordinate will be transformed into texture space and that's how the depth map will be stored in the form of a texture. So now we know that how computer or how engine knows that which fragment has to go where in the texture by transforming coordinate spaces from the world space up to the texture space. At the end of the step one which includes two sub steps we will have a Z depth texture which we will call light depth map texture and this is rendered from the light. Now comes the step 2 and at this step the role of the camera comes in place. That means we will render the scene from the camera as usual. 
for rendering the scene from the camera the same rendering pipeline will be followed that we understood in the previous chapters and for every fragment to be rendered or drawn its distance or the depth from the light is checked against the sampled depth stored in the light depth map texture what does that mean is this is a one big step which is divided into sub steps so for example if we are rendering this fragment of the sphere in that case after we follow the rendering pipeline we will also find out the coordinate of this fragment as seen from the light and then we will have to test the z depth of this fragment from the light against the sampled z depth of the light depth map texture and how we would know that which fragment to look for to do this z depth test and in order to do that we will follow the same steps again that this world position will be transformed into view which is the light view then projection which is the lights projection then ndc space and then texture space and which will give us a location within 0 to 1 range and whatever location is given to us by this calculation we will sample that fragment and we will read the z depth coming from the texture so now we have the z depth of this fragment from the light and the z depth read from the texture and if the z depth of this fragment from the light is greater than sampled z depth that means this test has passed and the fragment will be lit else the fragment will be in shadow or in the dark so considering this test let's see if we are rendering this fragment of the plane and the z depth of this fragment is found out from the light in the scene and when it will be tested against the sampled z depth of this depth map texture this test will fail because when we baked this depth map we baked the z depth of this fragment because the distance of this fragment was lesser than this fragment of the plane and that's why this test will fail and this fragment will be in dark or in shadow and that's how we will be able to form a shadow on the plane and this way we will find out the result of every fragment to be drawn and mark them as one or zero one means it's a lit fragment and zero means it's a shadow fragment unity stores this complete map of one and zeros that will tell us in our shader that which fragment is lit and which fragment is in shadow and this map is provided to us by unity as a global variable which is underscore shadow map texture so global variables are the variables that can be shared by all the shaders in the scene they can be set by the scripts running in the scene and the values can be read from the shaders and this global variable can be shared by multiple shaders 